everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to set up and how to use Cubase IC, which is a remote control application for uh, iPhones, I think iPads, as well as iPod Touches. Um, now there's an another version of Cubase IC, which is IC Pro. This version here, which is also available for Android or some Android devices. And this thing costs, I think, 17 bucks or so. And it has quite a few added features. Things like being able to control channel faders from your remote device. And you can also create, I think it is headphone mixes something like that like you have mixed console settings over here quite a few extra features that you don't have on the free version now i don't have uh, any big enough device that really can make me control any tracks in any like legitimate way so i'm not really interested in the ic pro but if you are check it out I'm going to close that for now. So, I'm going to put this link here in the description. So you can go ahead and go to this page here. So there's a basic rundown of IC, the free version. You have the transport. There's This is a picture of the buttons. And then you have the arranger mode, which you can trigger the arranger, whatever you have set up in your arranger track. And then you have the connections tab, which allows you to connect to your Cubase, or essentially it connects to your computer, which then controls Cubase. So here's the different features, a kind of list of all the features. Now to get this Sky Remote, you have to download the app on your device, and then you have to download the application for your uh, computer. So for the computer, it's called Steinberg SKI Remote. You go here, the download link. For the app, for, uh, the iTunes app, or whatever it is, iPod, iPod, uh, <laughs> iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad here, uh, you can visit this website or just go on your device. So hit the download now. And there's going to be three different downloads. There's the IC Pro download which is this first link. Down here is the newest version of IC, which is 1.2.0. And then there's an older version of this down here. So we're not interested in that. We're going to go ahead and download the IC 1.2.0 SK remote here. And I have Windows. If you have Mac, download the Mac. So, and because I already downloaded this, I'm just going to go cancel, but you would save then you have your thing here. This is the app. Now you install the app and again you would have to accept terms and conditions, pick your bit version, etc, etc. And because I already have this I'm not going to bother reinstalling it so I'm just going to cancel. You would finish the installation and then what you're going to do is go into Cubase. Let's cancel that and uh, set up something real quick. All right, so go into Devices, and then Device Setup here, and then you're gonna click on this little plus symbol, and right at the top here is gonna be Steinberg SKI Remote. So you're gonna add this remote device to the list, and then the SKI Remote ends up right here. Super cool. All right, so now we have to download the app on our uh, Apple device. And I have an iPhone 4, which has a nice big-ass crack on the screen. So go ahead and go into the App Store. Search for, not Gubase, but Cubase. And it shows up here, IC and IC Pro. We're going to go with IC. And uh, command. There we go. So we go get. 
and git again for some reason and install cool beans all right so it should be should download really fast you can see it going come on oh yeah so anyways to connect these two devices you need both of them connected to a Wi-Fi network so right now I have my um, my computer here is connected to what's called a I guess it's angles yeah angles network I don't know who named it <laughs> angles network which is our router device which is connected to the internet um, and I'm connected to that same router on my phone so all you have to do is go into Cubase IC and then we're just going to flip this and you can see already it's flipped up here it recognizes my device which is under this connections tab so here's the transport tab the arranger tab and then the connections already it's recognized my computer so I'm gonna go ahead and connect to that and now it's connected to the computer let's go back to our arranger mode we're gonna hit OK on here and we're gonna open up a project just to kind of test it out now one thing that I noticed on this program is if you're gonna use any of these features here this is the loop this is the, I think, punch in. No, this is the metronome count in button. This is the metronome button. And this is the arranger activation uh, button. These have to be pressed before you're playing. So I'll try and demonstrate that. Let's take a quick glance at the arranger window. Quick glance at the transport. And then we're just gonna go here and activate a record place so that we can demonstrate the recording thing here. So yeah, as I was saying, when you're playing this, go ahead and play it. I try and activate the metronome. You can see it's doing something, but it's not actually activating the metronome. Same goes... Oh, look at that. Okay, so this is just weirdly confusing me how it's working and not working, but it works reliably when it's stopped. And because I don't have an actual arranger track, it's not doing anything with the arranger here. And there's nothing showing up on the arranger. But... All of these other things work quite nicely. So you have this uh, fast forward, fast reverse kind of thing. Now it's, it's weird because if you hold it, it can kind of just go indefinitely. Now if you also have any markers, I believe these buttons will go to the next markers. So let's play around with that for a little bit. Let's add a few markers. Nope. What the heck did I push? Stop. Stop! <laughs> Okay, so this thing is okay. Sometimes it's unresponsive and it's annoying. Okay, there we go. See, now it's jumping through the markers. There we go. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, sorry, I was pushing the wrong button. So this is next marker, and this is previous marker. And this, I think, is go to the beginning of the track. Anywho's, you kind of get the gist. You can also push the record button. All right.
right, so I think you get the gist of it. Um, so I can see this thing being really handy for, let's say you're recording yourself and like you're a solo musician or whatnot and you're trying to record yourself and you have to be away from the computer itself. You don't have to bring your keyboard and mouse and like look over from 20 feet and guess where your mouse is pointing and all that other stuff. You have easy access and control um, by your device where you can just carry it around somewhere that's close within range to your uh, router and then that way you have reliable a reliable way of start, stop, uh, record, loop, kind of just basic functions. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that. I do have another way of controlling Cubase and that is with um, I'll just briefly mention, I'm going to be doing another video on this, but it's called, it's called uh, Remote Desktop App. And this is basically an app on your phone that controls the computer. It's not controlling Cubase, but it's controlling the computer. And it's, uh, you basically have access to all of Cubase as you would on your computer, but what you're doing is you're using your touch screen on your phone as a touch screen for your computer. Now the downside to this is that you can't have both your computer running normally and your phone running as the controller at the same time. When you're using the controller to control your desktop, your computer goes into lock screen mode. And then once you're done with this, you can unlock the screen and continue as you were doing. So this is another really handy feature of controlling Cubase by long range and whatnot. And the advantage to this thing is that you can have control over all of Cubase functions because you're uh, just controlling the computer itself rather than having only limited um, options of connectivity. So anyways, yeah, that's just a brief introduction to the next remote that I'll be introducing. And that one has a little bit more in-depth stuff to talk about. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you liked that, and maybe you'll uh, think of a good use of having a remote device like this. So anyways, take care, bye-bye, and see ya.